Welcome back on the Good Morning Artesia Radio Show. And it's time once again for our City Council meeting recap. And today the uh, City Council recapper designee is, is City Clerk Treasurer Aubrey Hobson. Aubrey, thanks so much for coming in this morning. Thank you. Appreciate you uh, doing this. I know uh, the mayor had mentioned a, a while back that you had said you were going to retire. I'm going to retire. Uh, I've spent about 46 years in city government. And it's time to get out. Time to get out. Time to get out. I'm not doing as good a job as I used to. So. Well, that's... I was going to make a... <laughs> I'm not going to say a word. Yeah, um, uh, well, good. Well, have, have you kind of decided what you're going to do once you get done well, with this? Or are you just going to let I'll it happen? i try to keep from starving. <laughs> <clears throat> so, uh, inflation's up. <clears throat> Picked a bad time to retire. So. Uh, well, I don't know if you can ever know exactly when the best oh, time yeah. is. You no, just got to... That's the worst part of it is the uncertainty. So. Yeah. But I'm sure we'll figure out some. And they've uh, they found your replacement? Yes. Yeah, we have. Uh, Summer Valverde is being trained right now. Okay. Uh, so she'll take over. That's good. Well, um, first of all, for those that may not know, city clerk treasurer, just uh, what are some of the duties of the city clerk treasurer for the city of our team? Uh, it's just almost a catch-all. It's in most towns it's like a city manager especially if you don't have a city manager so um, they're responsible for all the records and they're responsible for elections minutes at the council meeting had to attend every council meeting then i'm also the uh, department head for the library the museum the airport senior center and then i also oversee purchasing and things like that okay and it's been an interesting time the last few years between, you know, you go back not that long ago and the oil business was way down. Right. Then we had all of the impact on the whole world from uh, the COVID-19 shutdowns. We're starting to see a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. Um, this year so far in the first quarter, we're about $1.8 ahead of GRT that we budgeted. But there are so many things going on in Santa Fe that <clears throat> we can't really tell what, what the trend is mm -hmm. right now because they change the way you report, whether you report inside the city or outside the city. And uh, location is uh, location of the project versus location of the, city, the business, mm -hmm. that's going to make a difference. But it, we probably won't see that until a couple of months when people say, okay, we made a mistake. Now we're going to do it right. Yeah. Uh, so there'll be some adjustments. Uh, it's hard to tell what the thing is with the biodiesel plant out here. They're they're providing some extra money for the construction. The turnaround is supposed to be starting here in in another month or so. Mm -hmm. That will make a difference, and we won't be able to see a regular check probably until January, and then we will know what's going on. Sure. Uh, they also started uh, taxing internet sales. The problem I'm having with TRD on that is they can't tell how much of that is internet sales. And I can't figure out how they're not doing that because they also, LFC said we're going to have a lot of money this year for capital outlay because of the oil and gas and because of the increase in internet sales. Mm -hmm. So if they can track the state internet sales, they should be able to track the city internet sales. You would think. Yeah, but they think. say they can't. So we'll see how that works. So do they have a formula to distribute to the cities and, and, and counties from the Internet? For the Internet now, it would be if you order here in Artesia over the Internet, they charge you the city tax. Uh, before the last two years, they've just been giving us so much money. First year, they gave us 10000 a month. Second year, they gave us 20000 a month. Uh, so we don't know how much that's going to be this time. So I think we're not going to know that for another four months. There is a report that the state puts out that's four months behind mm -hmm. that we might be able to see that starting in about four months. Yeah, that's interesting. And I wonder how the Internet companies, because a lot of people are using things like VPNs to mask their location. Uh, I'm sure it's not a perfect system. Yeah, yeah. Um, Shop local. Yeah. <laughs> Shop local. <laughs> that would kind of that would help a, a lot of that. But some, yeah. but convenience says that. Uh, yeah, it's convenient. But then again, I mean, if you if the people here have it, mm -hmm. and now it's going to be the same tax that used to, you save eight percent on anything. But if it's here, I mean, just go down and pick it up. Yeah. 
but I understand. I understand the. Uh, now, did I? I think I read an article, um, and I didn't know if this was a part of something that Artesia had done. The mayor has talked in the past about how sometimes litigation for anything takes a long, long time. Was, was there a decision recently that? required the state to go back and recalculate some of the yes. uh, gross receipts tax payments back that, uh, that Artesia was a part of? Yeah, we, and originally it was about seven years ago that we started, and at that time the city of Artesia was the main um, the main entity in it. We had five. Um, and our loss was $79,000. Well, by the time we finished this out, our liability, our, our uh, shortage was six million dollars so they uh, that's a lot of money that's a lot of money for a little town yeah uh, but they weren't going to give all that money back so what they agreed to was to um, for all 44 cities and counties that got involved with it they uh, made a lump sum of 50 million dollars city of artesia receives about 2.5 and then we had to pay the attorney fees of 10 percent so even though it's not what we wanted, if we'd gone to litigation, we may not have gotten anything because there were some questions on, um, um, what do you call that? Statutes of limitations. Mm -hmm. on request. Sometimes there's <laughs> That's a why some year. of these get drug out, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, we might as well do that. But yeah. um, so, and what the mayor has said, you know, it's, it's taxpayer money against taxpayer money. So that nobody wins in that. They'll just get... Get it finished, and even though we didn't get what we lost, <clears throat> there's a possibility that mm, they did it right. I mean, but this they just said let's do 50 million. We had asked for about 98 million, mm -hmm. so for for, for the whole for the whole group. Yeah. So, do you, do you think as a result of the actions that took place and the settlement that was done that for moving forward? <laughs> I'm sorry. <No. laughs> I really don't think it's going to change much. Wow. Uh, now they have made some changes to the to the legislation that will make it a little bit easier for us to uh, trigger an, an investigation. I was on a committee five years ago to change it to help us out. Where a city could go back, and if they were shorted 20% of their monthly amount, they could ask for an investigation. By the time it got to the legislature, they changed that to 20% of your annual. So it was going to have to be shorted us $4 million before we could ask for an investigation. Well, we only get $2 million a month, so Albuquerque had to have a $28 million loss. So they changed it at the last minute before the municipal league could, could fight it. So yeah. that's been sitting there for a while now. I think they've gone back to the 20% per of the monthly total. So And, it, and as I recall, the, the main <clears throat> issue is the um, clarity with, you know, the money comes back to the city that gets collected by the states, the, the, the gross receipt tax payments. But cities and municipalities and counties really have no way of knowing I mean, you, you can guesstimate what you think it's going to be, but there's no real hard numbers as to, to, to justify the numbers that they do give back uh, through this process. The, uh, it's always the uh, way it's always been. And since we started this litigation, we have found there's a report called the V9 report, which lists every business and how much they put in. Okay. And we were getting those in the litigation. So we met with them and they said, wait a second, we can't do that because there's some federal information in there that we can't let you see. Oh, so you can't see any of it now. So you can't see any of it. <laughs> um, they are saying we can request the V9s and look at those. Now, you have to realize that they say we can't do that because the taxpayer's information is protected. Right. And I can understand that. But anyone who looks at it has to go through training and has to know you can't release that information. Um, so, I think you could get it, but I don't know. They they keep running us, giving us a run around. They do have a 
municipal liaison up there named David Montes. He's been really good. That's one of the changes they made, and uh, he's really good to work with. Yeah. Um, so that's that's one step forward. But uh, you know, when they get someone to um, file a report and file a claim, they can go back four years. So some of the stuff we're getting from uh, construction right now is just way up there because of the biodiesel probably. Right. I don't think the biodiesel is in the city limits, most of it. Mm -hmm. So I would think that within the next two or two, three years, maybe just one year, they'll ask for it back. <laughs> so we have to watch that. You yeah. Have to always be mindful that it could come back. And that's interesting. And I, I always found it kind of interesting because from, from a city's standpoint, the city, ha the council, the mayor, has to approve a budget. The budget goes to Santa Fe to be approved. Cities and municipalities, counties go through audits from time to time to verify that everything they're, they're doing is correct. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the money that goes to the state to be distributed back to the counties and municipalities via the gross receipts tax, it... What do you mean you want to know yeah. what, what's going on? That, that, that's got to be frustrating. Uh, yeah, and another thing frustrating, we talk to the TRD people when we have seminars, mm -hmm. and everybody's upset about that. Well, TRD just turns around and says, we'll change the law, because the law says we can't do it. Right. It's not our fault. Right. So, anyway. Well, that's... <laughs> well, they're... Technically, they're right. They're right. They're right. You know, you have to go by the law. Yeah. And in the spirit of cooperation, forget about that. So you, know, you need to have one one bit of that information out to the public that shouldn't have gone out. Yeah. And you got a problem. Then you got a problem. Yeah. And so they err on the side of caution. I remember when I was working for Jow, we had a form that says, tell us what your gross receipts was for last year. <laughs> they send it back. And he said, no, your business. Yeah. And we couldn't do that. Yeah. And now, before you could do that, back in the 60s, mm -hmm. you could do that. I went through the minutes one day, and there were two people holding out, QL White and my dad. <laughs> <laughs> he owned a service station, and he wouldn't give him the information. Your dad. <laughs> yeah, my dad. So we've been rebels for a long time. <laughs> Can't you do anything about your dad? People have been trying forever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that gonna happen? Well, let's go ahead and uh, dig into to last night's city council meeting and kind of kind of give us some of the highlights. <laughs> yeah, it lasted eighteen minutes last night. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, we had a special meeting, a special hearing, technically, um, for the utility liens. People who were didn't want to have the liens put on their property or were uh, protesting. No one showed up for that. So uh, we went ahead and went to the consent agenda. We had two hires. Uh, I can't read my writing. No, I think his name's Carlos Mart uh, Rodriguez in the cemetery. And we had uh, Jesse Kane in the wastewater. Okay. Uh, had some travel and training for the fire and infrastructure. We have requests for city facilities for Lady, Our Lady Grace Catholic Church and Artesia Arts Council. They have the yearly Guadalupe Park. We had Artesia Public Schools use of JC Park for the cross-country meet. Artesia Main Street, they're going to hold several events. Trick or Treat Main Street, uh, Veterans Day celebration, and the Parade of Lights. So those were all approved on the consent agenda. Okay. Then we had... Reports from the committees. The only real report was from the Recreation Committee. Uh, Councilor Rodriguez reported on the Youth Football uh, League um, kickoff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, they, um, he said it was very impressive and they, all the kids were really That was uh, Monday night, uh, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, I believe it? so. Yeah. I, I, they, I went out there to look around and uh, that, that really is an impressive facility. Yeah, they, they said it was really nice that night. He said there was some good football done too. Yeah, uh, good. Uh, then we had my part. We had a resolution for the delinquent utility liens that we're going to be filing after we write one more run through to see if anybody's paid. Um, then we had a designation of the legislative capital request. Every year we go to the legislature to see if we can get some money, which well, last year we got two grants for 500000 for some engineering. This year they're doing a little bit different, so we wanted uh, direction from the council to which of the five projects we wanted to do, and they picked the first three on the ICIP, which would be the water well, 
26th improvements and Hermosa improvements. Okay. So those are the ones we're going to apply for. That's about uh, probably almost $12 million worth. And all, all for all, all of it? All three. Okay. The, uh, but the, the legislature said they'll probably have some money this year, more money than they thought they were going to have. So we're going to step up to the troughs just like everybody else. Uh, well, if you don't ask... You don't ask, you don't get it. You know. um, sometimes when you ask, you don't get it. That's true. Um, then we had a budget adjustment resolution, a simple resolution to um, create a custodial fund for the Yates Transero project. Okay. And then we had um, uh, adjustment of some revenue and uh, expenditure line items to account for that TRD lawsuit settlement and the paying of the attorney fees. Okay. And that's simple, simple stuff. And that's it. That's we it. We didn't have a lot. So has the council, because you said it's going to be a couple of million, a little over two million from the settlement. Yeah, 2.3, I think, total net. Does that, after the attorney's fees paid, have they designated what they're going to do with that yet, or it's just going to go back? It'll just go back in the general fund. You know, we, this, this year, budget year, we were $5.4 million short. Mm -hmm. So that'll just help. And then we have a one5 from the um, FRF, which is the CARES Act, HEROES Act, mm -hmm. this year, and that will help. Yeah. Uh, and if we get, if we keep going with the extra GRT, then we might be able to pull even this year, but no yeah. telling what it'll be next year. Because it's been a couple of years that it's been on the on the negative side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Five Which, and six million. But pretty amazing, though, in in spite of that. The council was able to approve the purchase of the property for the uh, uh, north of town, the warehouse warehouse facility. Yeah, they uh, they asked me to sweep the corners, and <laughs> uh, I told them I think we have a round room, <laughs> but uh, I, I, I swept all I can. But we we were able to do it without using general fund money. You know, we we had some money in the water and sewer infrastructure, so it was a it was a good. A good project. You know, we got an eleven million dollar building. Uh, we could have never done that. Right. And uh, our, even our estimates to build a new one, a small one, was going to be six million. So it turned out real well. Because it yeah. was what three or four? Four point two. Four point two. So it was a. It, it was you just couldn't pass it up. You know, it, it was just you know when I first saw it, it was for oh, going to be auctioned. I asked them, I said, "You guys want to look at that?" And we'll we'll see it. And they said, after they looked at it, they said. And that's a good call. Yeah. But if those other two people that are bidding against us had gone up, we didn't have any authorization to go any higher than what we did. So. Yeah. So it, it, it all worked out. So I think so. I mean, it's a nice facility. Very good. nice. Good deal. And it'll take care of them for another 15, 20 years. Yeah. We won't have to worry about it, right? I won't. <laughs> <laughs> it lasts another four months. I'm good. I've good. got seven council meetings left. Seven council. You're counting yeah. them down, huh? Yeah. Well, of course, I've had. I've been to 900 in my career. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, because you mentioned JAL. Yeah. You were in JAL. At and I was in Kermit after that. Kermit, Texas. Yeah. What's What's the biggest difference between Texas and New Mexico biggest in, in this type of job? That is that the state doesn't interfere with what you're doing. Uh, you don't send your budget into the state to get it approved. Uh, anytime you make a, uh, a change in your budget, mm -hmm. you have to notify the state of New Mexico, but you don't have to there. What they do is when the auditor comes in and he looks it over, well, did you do everything right? You know, you just keep it within it, and that works. Mm -hmm. And when I griped about that one time to the DFA, they said, well, we're trying to keep you from going bankrupt. Mm -hmm. I said, give me an instance of anybody that's going bankrupt in Texas. And they don't do this. Said, you either think we're stupid or you think we're cheating. Well, I think it's the second. <laughs> you know. Because you've been here long enough, you know, the history of New Mexico and politics and stuff. Yeah, uh, we, we've talked about, you know, DFA. I've, I've had arguments with them for 40 years. Yeah. And just not, not very long ago, a few years ago, they were saying that you could take money from water and put it in general fund to help them out okay and general to water mm -hmm. used to they said you couldn't do that right and so i called them i said when did you guys change that yeah what changed yeah he said it's always been that way i said no one has <laughs> i said you guys told us we couldn't do that yeah and he says uh well why would we tell you that i said because you think you're god 
And he goes, that could be. <laughs> <laughs> At least they're honest, but yeah. they just want their hand in everything. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, but so I'm I'm never going to win against them. I'm just going to fade off into the sunset. Fade I mean, off. They're going to win. Yeah. <laughs> play, play, let's see. You play guitar. Or what do you What do you play? I play guitar and swing, sing. Yeah. So, yeah. so you'll just you'll just ride off. With I, your... I guess play. You know, cowboy rides away. <laughs> but. Uh, is that I'll probably do a little bit more writing and stuff like that. So. Excellent. But we'll see. You know, I don't know. I've been pay- making a list of things I don't want to do. Mm-hmm. One of them is putting together barbecue pits for a Home Depot. Because <laughs> I bought one and it took me four hours and my wife had to finish it. <laughs> oh, I was no. going to throw it out into the yard. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to. Uh, one guy, my piano player retired. He said, yeah, I'm. I'm uh, volunteering to walk dogs. Mm-hmm. I put that down on my left list. You're I don't, don't want to do that. You're not walking dogs. Uh, and then I said, the only thing I've got on the right side mm-hmm. is sitting on in my uh, house in the mountains watching squirrels. That's the number one thing I'm, I'm said. I, I can do that. Yeah. But you know, you could do a post-retirement contract with the city. You could be the squirrel breeder for the city <laughs> yeah, of Yeah, I might do that. Bring some squirrels back yeah. down here. But, you know, with the state rules, if I, I, if I retire with PERA, I can't come back to work for the city. I can't even sign a contract. Oh. Yeah, okay. they got you covered every way. Yeah. Oh, we've talked about substitute teaching. Mm-hmm. And um, my wife, we looked the other day, and they had a, a dishwasher at the senior center up in cloud crawl mm-hmm. so that might be okay yeah you only work probably three hours a day and uh, yeah so i said well, who knows who knows we, we we may work up there we may work down here i don't know yeah it's just wait and see well good luck to you thank you best to you and your family and appreciate all you've done for the city all the years so aubrey hobson and and if this goes over well you may be asked to do this again once or twice i doubt it you doubt it <laughs> yeah okay i've only been asked two two times before and i got yelled at the last time I did it. Well, uh-huh. we didn't We didn't say anything this time, though, did we? No, I don't think we did, but you never tell. You know, there are some people who listen who want to want to catch you at everything. <laughs> but uh, that's what happened the and last I'm, time. And I'm not trying to get anybody caught, you yeah, know? Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> uh, but at least one thing that's really good about this, mm-hmm. we did not regress into clown jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I, went, right. I listened to that, and I just could not believe it. It kept on getting worse and worse and worse. Well, that was yesterday. That was yesterday, <laughs> and yesterday's gone. <laughs> Aubrey, thank you, you so bet. much. We'll you see you. You take ya. care. All right.